Welcome back to another video. If you guys saw the thumbnail, you know that this video is all about unboxing haul slash first impression. I've got five fragrances that I can't wait to get my nose on and share with you guys. So stick around, they're up next. Welcome back to another video, I'm Max Forte. Today we're talking about two fragrances from Jevoy or Jevois that I love. You guys know how much I love this brand. And we have two here that really intrigued me. One is called L'Art de la Guerre, which I believe means the art of war. Uh, we have another one here that is called Ambre Première, which means Premier Amber. Um, and then we have two more fragrances here that I will be sharing, actually three more fragrances that I will be sharing with you today. One of which is from the collection, the new collection from Olfactive Studio, which is a brand that I spoke to you guys a lot about, you know, when I first started doing review, reviews here on YouTube, I'm talking about, you know, 2014, 15, and 16. And I do enjoy this particular company a lot, especially Chambre Noir, which I believe it's a masterpiece. But let's check out Irish Shot here. I love Irish fragrances, so I'm very uh, intrigued about this one. And then we have one from Chopard, which is a company that doesn't really get much play or much limelight here in the fragrance community and this one here is called uh, from their private blend this is called Miel de Arabi which is you know translating it's honey of Arabian or Arabian honey can't wait to try this I love honey fragrances especially with an animalic facet and here is a brand that does not get any play here on YouTube why is that you guys tell me at the bottom let me know in the comments if you've heard of this company this is Chris Collins, used to be the model for Tom, uh, for, not Tom Ford, he used to be the model of uh, Ralph Lauren for many years. Uh, I believe he used to play basketball as well. So Chris Collins, model, entrepreneur, came up with his own fragrance brand, I believe in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. And I haven't really tried much of his stuff, but I figured I'd get one of these fragrances. It's, it has some notes that really sounds good and intriguing to me. This is called Sweet Taboo, and I can't wait to share with you guys. Let's crack these open and let's get smelling. All right, I'm going to start with the two Jovoy first, the two fragrances from Jovoy or Jovois. Uh, this one here, L'Art de la Guerre, uh, the Art of War. Let's see what we get out of this fragrance. I haven't really heard much about this particular fragrance in the community. You know, my favorites so far from the brand are going to be Psychedelique, which is a gorgeous patchouli fragrance, as well as Private Label, which is an outstanding vetiva based scent. All right, so the first one we're talking about is going to be, and by the way, these are 50 mils. I went with the 50 mil. Love the presentation here. The box has this leather-like feel. Fragrance sits perfect in the middle, and then it slides in. Really nice little coffin action here. Lac de la Guerre label on one side, Javoy label on the other side. Details at the bottom. Thick metal cap. And the sprayers are actually pretty good on this co company. One of, the, one of the best niche sprayers out there. Real nice blast. Wow, this stuff is good. It's... A little floral, very fruity, and a little bit smoky. Let's see what we get as far as notes, L'Art de la Guerre. Notes behind L'Art de la Guerre is going to be Vanina Muraccioli, which I believe is Italian. And the fragrance has a very nice, fruity, and unique uh, opening. You're going to get rhubarb with green apple, which is really nice and citrus and, you know, juicy and fruity. I love the rhubarb and fragrances. It's not quite uh, used much, but when it's used correctly, it's, it gives the fragrance a really nice character and, 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 and texture. And I really love the opening here. The apple, the green apple is going to be very present. If you know the scent of green apple, green apple shampoos, you're definitely going to get that green apple, the ones right in the get-go here, right up front and center. The heart brings forth this floral kind of a, you know, dance between immortal, violet leaves, and lavender, which needless to say, I'm a big sucker for lavender, so this is already a winner for me. I love to see how this is going to transition on my skin, but so far here on the, on the little blotter, it is a winner. And at the base, you have leather, patchouli, oak moss, labdanum, and sandalwood, which I can see a little bit of creaminess poking in. The leather here is not going to be skanky or animalic or animalistic. Instead, it's going to be a very wearable leather that's, you know, almost bright, but not quite has this like suede cozy effect. So the scent will transition. This is going to be a complex fragrance that will definitely be different for everyone's skin. But I do like what I get here so far. Definitely, I'd say first impression grade here, first impression rating. I would give this a seven and a half out of 10. Really nice first impression on this one. Next up, also from the Jovoy, I love amber fragrances, especially as the weather starts to turn and get cold out. You know, late fall into the winter time, you know, between late October all the way until about February here. This stuff is going to be probably one that I will wear 
Uh, granted, it has to blow my socks off. Let's see if that's going to be the case. And the fragrance here is going to be Umbre Premier. So, you know, Premier Amber. I love Amber fragrance. I'm really excited about this one. I looked at the notes and it looks like this could be another one of my favorites from Javoy. Let's take her for a test drive. All right, Umbre Premier, the nose behind this one, again, the same deal here. It's gonna slide out. You have this little satin thing here that you can pull the bottle from. And the nose behind this one is Michelle Ceramitat. So let's see what we get out of this fragrance. Love Amber. The color is a little darker than the Art de la Guerre, but not as dark as I would like it to be, but that doesn't mean anything. It could still be a nice dark Amber. Let's see what kind of Amber this is. Again, this spray is really nice. Okay. I do, right off the bat, get resemblances with fragrances coming to mind here. I can't quite put my nose on it. Oh, my nose, literally. Um, my finger on it. It reminds me of something. Okay. It reminds me of Amber Precio from uh, um, Matre A. Gagnier. If you know that fragrance, I'll pop the picture here. It is going to be a more tamed, luminous, more lustrous kind of a vibe. Uh, that fragrance is going to be very powdery, the one I'm talking about, and very deep and dark and animalistic. This one here is going to be in the same vein, like they, they could be brothers and co or cousins. But this is going to be a little brighter, a little more luminous, like I said. But a great amber, nevertheless. I think it's going to be long-lasting and quite nice and a little bit powdery, too. It's got some powdery, um, you know, nuances that I can detect. Let's look at the notes real quickly. We're talking rose, spices, amber, patchouli, and vanilla. So... All in all, I get all those notes, like I said, very similar to Ombre Precio from uh, Maitre A. Gagnier, but in a more tame, subtle, and smooth manner. But a really nice one. Not as unique as I would like it to be, but a good amber nevertheless. I would give this a 7 out of 10. Not as good as L'Arte de Guerre. I, I think the, the art of the war here is a little more unique, and, and I kind of like that, that green apple uh, immortelle vibe that I get with this one. Let's get into the next one here. Now, this one here... A brand that hardly ever gets any talk in the community show part. I know Noble, Noble Cedar is a really good fragrance. Noble Vetiver is a really good one. Oud Malakai is also a great one. Now they have launched this uh, private blend. And I am dying to try this one. It, it got a little bit of a limelight in the community, especially from Mark, Robes08. I think he has a first impression on this fragrance. And I was very curious to dab into it and got myself a bottle to share with you guys this particular fragrance. Let's see what we get out of this one. It looks absolutely stunning. The, 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 the bottle looks like this emerald cut green, just gorgeous. Very thick, heavy uh, metal cap. Let's look at the sprayers here. Pretty good, nice distribution, pretty strong. Wow, the smell is, oh, it is magnetic by the way, guys. The smell, it is breathtaking, guys. We're talking about this animalistic, there is oud here. I detect a little bit of a smokiness going on. The honey is going to be animalistic, a little bit sweet, not overly sweet, not syrupy sweet, but definitely sweet. There's a, there's a nice spiciness going on here, perhaps pink pepper. Let's take a look at the notes. From the get-go, a really nice, stunning juice that I can't wait to rock in the next few months because I think this is definitely great for you know fall and winter and perhaps spring. I think in the summertime, you could wear this if you go easy on the trigger but I think it's best for cooler weather. Let's look at the notes. All right, so basically this is going to be a tea-based scent. So you have black tea, you have pomegranate, which that's the fruity and sweetness that I'm getting, along with an animalistic uh, honey. It is more of a linear scent that it shows me here on, 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 online, but I think it's going to transition on skin. And I think it's gonna be a great one, guys. There's definitely a ton of spices here. I'm, I'm detecting cinnamon, I'm detecting perhaps, perhaps nutmeg perhaps a little bit of cloves, really good fragrance. It starts off strong and animalistic and I think it'll transition and smooth out and be a very well-rounded scent. Definitely a compliment getter and something that's really gonna be a head turning of a fragrance. Between the three here, this is definitely my favorite so far and I would give this an eight out of 10 without obviously trying on skin or you know wearing it fully, but definitely a great first impression on this one, guys. Next up we have from Olfactive Studios, I talked to you guys quite a bit about this fragrance house over the past few years. You know, I'm, I'm gonna link a couple of the videos, especially uh, Chambre Noir. Um, there's a fragrance called Close Up that they have. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different fragrances that they released over the years. Chalene Verlo is the nose and, and, and you know CEO of the brand, creative director and perfumer. And I'm gonna tell you guys, amazing house that combines 
the art of picture with scents. Like every fragrance they put out has this uh, picture that usually comes with the box. And then this particular one, you have this beautiful iris portrait here of the iris flower. Beautiful uh, presentation here, magnetic box. You have again the portrait. Every fragrance you get from, the, from this particular brand, you're gonna get this beautiful portrait because they wanna combine both. And this of course, because it's an iris base scent, of course, this is an iris shot. Literally, you get a shot, a picture of iris, and you're gonna get a shot of iris right here with this bottle. Now, I think this is more of an extract, this is an extract de parfum. So this is perhaps like the private blend of this particular collection, because I believe the other fragrances from this line do not come with this beautiful leather uh, insert. I think it's a great accent. It's a stitched leather insert, which is perfectly done. It smells amazing, it is pure leather. I know you guys think it's weird to smell leather, but I smell everything, literally. <laughs> Uh, almost everything. But this is Iris shot and let me take it for a test drive because I love Iris and my fragrances and I'm hoping this is going to be a, win a winner, especially because fragrances like Dior Homme is not as beautiful as it once was. So I'm hoping this could be a good, um... wow. Guys, let me tell you something. Holy moly, I think there's leather in this Iris. Um, and this is an amazing iris fragrance, guys. Hidden gem alert right here, guys. You know, sirens go off. This is an outstanding iris fragrance. If you missed Dior Homme, it's not gonna smell just like it. The iris is going to be almost buttery, like an orris butter. And there's definitely a suede leather, just like the leather in case, just like, just like the leather casing here. I do get this really realistic leather uh, nuance to the fragrance. It's like you took these iris petals and you enveloped by this beautiful um, suede leather jacket. That's what I'm getting the most here. It's creamy, it's inviting, it's, it's, it's you know, voluptuous, very intriguing and extremely well done, guys. I love iris fragrances. This is one that I can definitely see making top lists for me, you know, especially like fall and especially in, in the springtime. This is a versatile fragrance that you can most definitely wear all year round. I can't, I, that's what I'm getting as a first impression. I can't wait to actually try it on skin, but so far, this is going to be a nine out of 10, guys. It's, it's almost 10 out of 10. If it gives me the performance and if it agrees with my body cam, this will be a 10 out of 10. Just amazing iris right here, perfection. If you love iris, I think this is gonna blow you away. I know I love this so much, guys. The nose behind this fragrance is none other than one of my favorite noses of all time in the top 10 for sure, Bass Noses. Dominic Ropion. Guys, this stuff, I'm telling you right now, nine out of 10. We're talking vetiver, leather, iris. There's, alda, there's some aldehylic notes also up top, which gives this almost like a Chanel-esque kind of a vibe to the scent, but really sophisticated, elegant, and extremely pleasant, guys. Just beautiful fragrance, nine out of 10. Let's go to the last one right now. Last but not least, we have Sweet Taboo from Chris Collins, as I spoke to you guys about in the beginning. This is going to be a first for me. On camera, sharing with you guys. Presentation's pretty cool. It's got this nice sleeve around, uh, this really cool box, square looking box. Let's crack this open. And here is the box presentation, Chris Collins logo up top, Chris Collins experience. We are, or world of Chris Collins, as it were. And here we go. Fragrance sits perfectly. I love the nuances of the dark bottle with the copper slash, yeah, it's more of a copper, kind of a gold, um, rose gold kind of a kind of a accents. Really cool presentation. Love the, bo the bottle. This is actually a 50 mil bottle, but I love the copper rose gold nuances with the black lettering. Let's take Sweet Taboo, which is also an extractive parfum, for a test drive, guys. And I'll have, again, link for all these fragrances at the description where I got them. So if you guys wanna check them out, you can. Sprays are pretty good, nice blast, good quality. Wow, guys, this is incredible. You hey guys know what, I keep it 100 with you guys. And let me tell you one thing, the opening here is pure gold. There are a few fragrances that I've tried in my life. There are of the Oriental, Woody Spicy family they absolutely blew me away. Now, what this smells like, this is festivities in a bottle, it's Christmas in a bottle, great for the seasons we have going on right now. I got this pine cone, cinnamon cloves, you know, musk gravageur kind of a vibe. That's also creamy, I think there's also cinnamon, tons of cinnamon cloves and also sandalwood in here. Let me look at the notes breakdown. 
but the initial blast here is a 10 out of 10, guys. I can't wait to try this on the skin. Definitely the highlight of, of, of the evening here or the day, uh, you know, if you're watching this in the morning or in the evening, the highlight of this first impression unboxing. Amazing stuff right here. Let me take a quick gander at the note breakdown. All right, so the notes behind this one is Natalie Fistauer. I hope I'm not butchering her name. And what this fragrance has is a combination of great notes that I love. We're talking cardamom, we're talking spices, we're talking cacao. There's definitely a beautiful creamy cacao that comes to play. And I can't wait to rock this because from the paper, it's just, it's so powerful and it's so beautiful with all those notes that I'm talking about. It's getting creamier, almost like a lidge type of a vibe, that cacao with the patchouli and the fruits. Definitely an outstanding fragrance, guys. Really love this, the scent DNA here. It's one that I'm really gonna be rocking in the next few months. Perhaps this has the potential to making my top, uh, you know, winter niche fragrances of 2020. This was released 2019, so it's been a year ago that this was released, and it took me a year to, to get my nose on this, but I'm glad I have. Definitely the highlight here, along with Irish Shot, I think are the best ones. These two, not as great as I anticipated. I think um, there's a lot other great fragrances from the Jovoy that I would rather own. Uh, besides these two, but uh, L'Art de la Guerre is actually pretty good. This one here was better than these two. Uh, this is almost like a Thai, but I would say Iris Shot because it's Dominic Ropion because of the notes that it has here. It just, it screams a little louder for my taste, and I'm going with this one. And number one, my favorite from all five here in this unboxing first impression is definitely gonna go to Sweet Taboo from Chris Collins. Like I said, doesn't get much limelight here. Let me know in the comments, have you tried any of these fragrances? And if so, which one is your favorite out of the five here? Please comment down below. Let me know if you're familiar with Chris Collins fragrances. And if you are, let me know your thoughts on the brand. What other fragrances from this brand I should check out? Same goes for Effective Studio, Chopard, and Javoy, guys. Go crazy in the comments. Share your thoughts with me. And of course, as always, if you love fragrance, if you love what I do here, I need your support to keep going. And by that, I mean in no form of you have to pay to watch me, like Patreon and stuff like that. It's free, guys. It doesn't take any money, and it makes my day, guys. Please do it for me. Little little one of those, little, you know, like. Touch the little subscriber button for me if you could. And hit the little bell icon so you get videos like these straight into your feed. I keep you in the know within the fragrance world. That's what I do, that's my duty to you. So please show me your support, guys. And as always remember, fragrance is emotion emotion. So be sure to choose your fragrance wisely and wear what truly moves you. I'll see you back again real soon with another video. Take care.